today we will have some basic knowledge about what is cpc that is civil procedure code and why was it enacted so without wasting any time let's begin with the question and answer round and let's start gaining some basic knowledge about the civil procedure code Let's start with the first question which is a defendant to a suit against whom no relief is claimed is called what The options are A co-defendant B pro forma defendant C intervenors or D none of the above The correct answer is option B that is a defendant to a suit against whom no relief is claimed is called a pro forma defendant moving on to the next question the section 9 of the code confers jurisdiction in which of the following matters the options are a civil matter b political matter c religion matter or d either a or b or c The correct answer to this question is option E that is section 9 of the code confers jurisdiction in civil matters So let's now see what does section 9 of the code state Now let's try and understand what does section 9 states Section 9 states the court to try all civil suits on this board This section states that The court shall have the jurisdiction to try all suits of civil nature, excepting suits of which their cognizance is either or expressly or impliedly barred. This means that all the courts shall have the jurisdiction jurisdiction to try every suit of civil nature, unless that suit or that jurisdiction is barred. expressly or impliedly by any code or by in any expressly mentioned situation this section has two broad explanation of the content of this section which is the explanation one states that a suit in which the right to property or to an office is contested is a suit of civil nature notwithstanding that such right may depend entirely upon the decision of the question as to religious rites or ceremony and the second explanation states that for the purpose of this section it is immaterial whether or not any fees are attached to the office referred to in explanation 1 or whatsoever whatever or not such office is attached to a particular place so now after that let's move on to the next question which is among the following which are the suits of a civil nature the options are a suit relating to rights to worship b suit relating to right to share in offerings c suit for upholding mere dignity or honor or d both a and b above the correct answer to this question is option d that is both a and b are correct that means to say the suits of civil nature the suits of civil nature are the suit relating to right of ownership and the suits for upholding mere dignity or honor let's now move to the next question among the following which are the suits of civil nature the options are a suit for recovery of voluntary payment of or the offerings b suit involving principally caste questions C suits relating to taking out religious processions or D none of the above The correct answer to this question is option C that is suits relating to taking out of religious procession is the example of suit of a civil nature The next question is a civil court has jurisdiction to try a civil suit unless its cognizance is barred A expressly B impliedly C either A or B or D only A not B The correct answer to this question is option C that is either A or B is correct which means that a civil court has jurisdiction 
to try a civil suit unless its cognizance is barred either expressly or impliedly. The next question is mark the incorrect statement. The statements are A. A statute ousting jurisdiction of a court must be strictly construed. B. Every court has inherent power to decide the question of its own jurisdiction. C. The consent can neither confer nor take away jurisdiction of a court. Or D. None of the above. The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, none of the above is incorrect statement regarding to a civil suit. The next question is, mark the correct statement. The statements are A. There is no distinction between want of jurisdiction and irregular exercise thereof. B. Every presumption should be made in favor of jurisdiction of a civil court. C. Both A and B above and D. Neither A nor B. The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, every presumption should be made in favor of jurisdiction of a civil court is and only is the correct statement in these options. The next question is, the jurisdiction of a court depends upon which of the following? The options are A. Avertments made in the plaint. B. Defense in the written statement. C. Both A and B above. Or D. None of the above. The correct answer to this question is option E. That is, jurisdiction of a court depends upon the avertments made in a plaint. The next question is, doctrine of res subjudice is provided under which of the following sections? The options are A. Section 9, B. Section 10, C. Section 11, or D. Section 12. The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, Section 10 of the CPC explains the doctrine of press subjudice. So let's now understand this concept in a detailed manner. So now let's talk about the Section 10 and see that what does it state. Section 10 talks about the stay of suits. As per this section, no court shall proceed with the trial of any suit in which the matter in issue is also directly and substantially in issue in a previously instituted suit between the same parties or between the parties under whom they or any of them claim litigation under the same title where such suit is pending in the same or any other court in India and having a jurisdiction to grant the relief claim or in any court beyond the limit of India established or continued by the central government and having like jurisdiction of before the Supreme Court. The next question is the section 10 of the code deals with which of the following things? The options are A. Stay of civil suits B. Puts a bar upon the institution of civil suit C. Both A and B and D. Neither A nor B. The correct answer to this question is option A. That is, section 10 of the code deals with the stay of civil suits. Let's now move on to the next question. Which of the following is based upon equity? The options are A. Res judicata B. Res sub judice C. Estoppel or D. None of the above. The correct answer to this question is option C. That is, equity is a principle that is based upon equity. Now let's move on to the next question, which is the Code of Civil Procedure was enacted on which of the following dates? The options are A. 21st March 1908 B. 21st June 1908 C. 31st December 1908 or D. 21st 9, 1909 
The correct answer to this question is option A. That is, the Code of Civil Procedure was enacted on 21st March 1908. The next question is, among the following, dash conclusively determines the rights of the parties. Fill in the blanks. The options are A. Decree B. Order C. Judgment or D. Application The correct answer to this question is option A. That is, Decree is the, the one that conclusively determines the right of the parties. Now let's move on to the next question. A statement given by a judge on the ground of decree or order is called what? The options are A. Plaint B. Written statement C. Judgment or D. Summons The correct answer to this question is option C. That is, a statement given by a judge on the ground of decree or order is called the judgment. The judgment is the final decision of any matter or an issue. It is given on the last hearing and after that it is a decision to an issue and only appeal follows the judgment. Now let's move on to the next question or the last question for the day which is the term res judicata means what? The options are A. Stay of proceedings B. Further proceedings C. A matter already adjudicated or D. None of the above the correct answer to this question is option C. That is, the term res judicata means a matter already adjudicated. That's all for today. This was the end of our first presentation. Hope you all liked it and hope this presentation or video was able to to teach you something about the civil procedure code. Thank you for uh, watching it. Thank you.